And uh, what I like about Anish is he practices what he preaches. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At uh, the last classical tournament that he played, he was just playing his course. He didn't care. Yeah. Yeah, I love it also. I really like Anish and, and Wesley and, and others. They just say, yeah, of course, I played this game. I was giving the course. And of course, that's that's what I played. That's why I gave. It's a good line. <laughs> <laughs> of course, it's in the course. <laughs> And uh, here we go. It's a handshake. We're off. Faruja starting with E4, just as we saw in the classical game between these two. And, okay, a repeat. So fast up to this point. The players replicating their classical encounter. Who's going to be the first to flinch? Who's going to be blinking here and deviating? And actually, it's Faruja who plays the move H3. And we saw the hesitation there from Anish. Similar, Judith? And Knight A3. Now the question is, should Black take on A3? He says yes. And yes. Even then, if he manages to make it, it's going to be a one second increment. It's not enough. Rook h7 and game over. Oh wow, Anish blocks the checks. White can't take the rook. The rook is poisoned. There's he's, a pin on the g-file. He's going to lose on time and oh, he resigns instead. And it is Anish Giri who wins the Armageddon match and nets one and a half points. Well done to Anish. He held his nerves in a really difficult position there. He broke the streak of losing three Armageddons in a row, and he takes that extra half point. Faruja came close, but no breakthrough in that attack.